Hey everyone, and welcome back to A Mortician's Tale. I uh, thought I'd pass this along. Hi Amy, I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month and apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Mushrooms? You hate mushrooms so much, I found the perfect thing for you. I do hate mushrooms. They're gross. I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker, look what you've done to me, but I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it, and I'm writing you on my phone, so I don't feel like Googling right now. Anyway, the idea is that it's a biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call a biomix, i.e. mushrooms and other microorganisms that help to decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil for the for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. It'll be just like Hannibal. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Love you. Think about it and let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm in planning ahead, am I right? Okay, that, that I don't want. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for going green, but I do not want mushrooms, like, no. Just mushrooms freak me out. So, let's not do that. Things to avoid saying at a funeral. <laughs> okay, welcome back. Now, we rarely do listicles here, but for this month's newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to deliver this month's advice, what not to say at a funeral. We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, and since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people. But fortunately, we can deliver a little more solid advice on what to not say to someone who is grieving. So here it is, funeral monthly's top five things to not say at a funeral. Number one, at least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this. It's probably not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best? Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk and just don't say it. Were they saved? No religious statements, just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views, and not only is it not always comforting, it can be insulting. It's true. They're with the angels now. See above's note, then rinse, repeat. Let me know how I can help. This one's tricky. You want to help, but those in mourning won't always ask for help. If you want to help, suggest specific things. For example, I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them, take them to their favorite restaurant, or buy tickets to see a movie together. I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can be applied in any situation, don't say stuff just for the sake of saying stuff. Just say, I'm sorry if you don't know what else to say. Yes, I'm comfortable. No, I'm not. Oh, what? Our son. What? Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront the situation. Rose and Daughters has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any witnesses sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes, so his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew has graciously offered to take this one on if you're uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is this suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know. I'm here if you need me. Look at this guy. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. <sighs> I don't... I don't think I can do that. It just... It feels wrong. Like, I would be really upset if it were me. I mean, I know that he's dead and he obviously, like, can't, you know, speak for himself, obviously. But it's just, it seems really wrong to not respect what he wants. So no, I'm not comfortable. So I guess I'll just prep this other person who I don't know. Fine. The deceased's family have asked for an open casket funeral, which means the body will need to be prepared and embalmed. Great. Great. We'll just uh, clean that clean that body. 
clean that body. Mm. All right. Gotta massage that body. Massage it. The eye caps. And some super glue. Like all this stuff, I don't, I just don't think I would want that. Like I don't want my mouth sutured shut. Like cotton ball in it and my eyes glued shut. You know? I just don't think so. Lotion that body. Jurgens. Ugh. Okay. Here's the thing. <sighs> okay. Everything is so squishy in this game. Okay. Uh, no. That's not it. This. Alright. Mm. Ugh. It makes sense why green funerals are so much cheaper because, like, all this stuff is a lot of work and a lot of, like, uncomfortable work. Nobody really knows that because nobody talks about this stuff. So I think that's why it's important to have a game like this to show people what goes on. Mm. Alright, get that turkey baster. We'll just not watch. <laughs> uh, it's fine, it's Kool Aid. It's Kool-Aid, guys. It's fine. All done. Mike will take care of Mrs. Rossi's makeup as well as dressing and putting her in the casket. I wonder if that decision made, like, any... had any effect on this or not. It's time to attend the funeral. Okay. A lot of people showed up to this one. That guy looks real creepy down there. Where's Maria? She couldn't be here. She didn't want to see her mother's body. I mean, I don't blame her. Anyway, I'm pretty impressed with the food. Did you try the amaretti? I didn't. She's no longer suffering or in pain. Hey, hey, I read an article that said you shouldn't say things like that. She's in a better place now. Hmm. She was too good for this one. How many cliches can you say in once? Okay, thanks, Aunt Sandy. Yeah, she's obviously upsetting her. So, keep your mouth shut, Aunt Sandy. I haven't cried since she died. Not once. How is Anna crying and not me? I'm the one who lost a parent. Hey, everybody grieves differently, dude. Quiet sobs. I'm sorry. I'll pat your head. There's always someone, like, looming over <laughs> the coffin. Doesn't look like her at all. I'm sorry, I did my best. She does look very gray. Well. Oh, we've made it to March. Um, welcome from Chad Grant to Rose and Daughter staff. We are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of the Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated. They will be another institution amongst hundreds of other properties owned across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to the Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rose and Daughters. We will send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to be leading the way for Rose and Daughters from now on. I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this. Matthew is saying, what the hell? All right, can I just say first off that this is bullshit? Ugh, knowing how these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring our emails now. No, okay, I don't really believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all of your business for so long 
This isn't six feet under. And they've just swooped in and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitive. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam and emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. All right. Can't really write much now. I have a lot of work I have to do with an inguinal hernia from 1750. It's the oldest in our collection, and you can even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. Super cool. I'll send you the link when we have it cataloged. That doesn't sound cool at all. What is my life? What is that sentence I just typed? But anyway, this event that I'm forwarding you is taking place near you. Figured you'd be into it. Might help with that feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you're feeling. Lots of death positive people there. Sounds like it'll be a safe space. You're invited to attend a death cafe? Come increase awareness of death with a view to helping people make the most of their finite lives. Join us, have a tea and cake, and talk with others about our thoughts, fears, and illuminations on death. The founder of the Death Cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, When people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate their humanity. See everyone at the Upside Down Jar next Thursday. Interesting. Are that, is that a thing? A death cafe? Is that a real thing? All right, different funeral traditions. Funeral rites, even in our own culture, may be something many of us may be unfamiliar with. For many people, all they know of funeral traditions are what they've seen in media. But, and I think this goes without saying, funeral rites and traditions aren't the same across the board. Different cultures have different protocols for cleaning the body to different aspects of the service itself. Religion provides different paths for dealing with death, but the goal is almost always the same offering support, guidance, and ease to the people who are grieving. In Judaism, interment usually begins immediately after somebody has passed. Up until burial, the body is never supposed to be alone, so often families will appoint a shomer, a guardian, to remain with the body. Preparations for burial begin as soon as possible in Muslim traditions as well. Local Islamic community organizations are also often involved and help the family make arrangements for the funeral service and burial. But not all practices are strictly religiously focused. In the aughts in South Korea, the amount of graveyard space began to shrink drastically, causing a law to be passed that required families to remove a loved one's body from its burial place after 60 years. Whoa. Many families began to cremate more often, but there are also companies that compress remains into beads in turquoise, pink, or black called death beads. This also occurs in North America, Europe, and Japan, but remains much more common in South Korea because of the space issue in graveyards and the expenses of cremation. And not all practices are somber either. Ever hear of the turning of the bones or famadihana, a ritual by the Malagasy people of Madagascar? Famadihana has families return to an ancestral crypt, exhume the bodies wrapped in cloth before dancing with the bodies to live music. This practice is a celebration, remembrance, and way of keeping the deceased involved in family news. Death can be a difficult time for many people, obviously, but that doesn't mean there isn't a beauty in the ways we choose to honor and celebrate our deceased. Interesting. All right. So this is from our new boss. Below are the details for our next client. Ensure you follow the requested specifications exactly. After you are done, I will review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. Great. Thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well, it was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. Oh my god. Alright, so she was, sounds like she was in a motorcycle accident. And needs to be cremated. Are we gonna see that, or? Okay, no. Before we cremate Miss Lonesco, we'll need to prepare her body. Okay. Take off her watch. And then put that in there. Alright. That's rough. Like, what if they wanted an open casket? Like, what if the person did? How would you... Would you have to do, like, facial reconstruction? I'm not sure how that would work. Alright, bone fragments. There's one. 
That's another bone. That sound, though. Alright. So Matthew will take it. So we can head back into the funeral home. I wonder how, like, how much everything went up since that other company took us over. Should we do a vigil at the spot? Careless drivers, I swear to God. That's really sad. I'm glad I'm here, but wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. It's okay. I have to go through all of her things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need any help, I can help. No, thanks. I mean, I... But no, I don't know. It's so intimate. Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. Yeah, she was kind of a closed book, except for you. Yeah. Yeah, she was special. So glad it was a cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body. So would I. She was always so careful. Wore her helmet, signaled, use the bike lanes. Asshole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leah. This has been hard enough on them without asking about the legal ramifications of all this. Yeah, after all this, let's see what we can do to help them. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. End of March. Alright, I'm just tending to my flower there. Okay. Uh, forward rules and code of conduct. Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work. P.S. I also really want mozzarella sticks. I can be both hungry and angry. And no, I will not say hangry ever. I love mozzarella sticks, dude. What? What's up? As stated in a previous email, here are the new rules and code of conduct I expect you to follow from now on while on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Enterprises. First and foremost, there is a required uniform and strict dress code from now on. Second, most importantly to this, is that no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. Dude, get with the times. People don't care about that anymore. When speaking with customers and clients, consider this opportunity to upsell i.e. always encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase the higher quality package. We find that encouraging loved ones to think of the comfort and style of the deceased as an experience with no price limit on it. <sighs> Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Our partner, Catering Concepts, provides high quality food that will be delivered weekly from their factory and can easily be defrosted the morning of the funeral. I expect all of the above changes to be instituted effective immediately to ensure a smooth transition into the high quality services Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated is known for. Yep, let's just exploit grieving people. Sounds like a good idea. Anyway, um, so this is from him as well, specifically to me. Hello, Charlotte. I have reviewed your request on behalf of a potential family inquiring if we at Hillside Heritage Enterprises can and will perform green burials. I should have informed you of this in the beginning, but we do not perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. Of course not. All employees and subsidiaries of Hillside Heritage Enterprises must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers, though, so do try your hardest to convince the families requesting green burials to instead choose a traditional burial package, complete with embalming caskets and vaults instead. I trust you will ensure we do not lose any customers. You can just... I'll put you in a casket. <sighs> That's rough, man. I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its hind legs like a human being, Charlie, a human being. We as a species have seen the beginning of our end. Alright, home funerals, why do it? The appeal of a home funeral is apparent for many, especially if the deceased was somebody very close to you. The idea of keeping them at home until they're ready to be buried or cremated can be comforting. It wasn't that long ago that we were taking care of our own deceased, but nowadays people are quick to pass off their loved ones to a funeral home. 
Most families aren't given the option and assume this is mandatory. Funeral homes will almost always prepare the deceased using embalming and other methods to make them appear more alive. But isn't this process counterintuitive to the grieving process? Being around the deceased allows the bereaved to spend a longer period of time with their loved one's body, which can help them mourn or give opportunities to family members and friends to see the deceased one last time before they are taken to be buried or cremated. The idea of keeping the deceased's body at home might sound gross, but it's important to understand that decomposition takes a long time and you can further slow this process by keeping your home cool and dry. To be around your loved ones and to see them decay naturally is an important part of the grieving process. Home funerals aren't just more intimate, but they are economical. A traditional funeral, complete with body preparation, service flowers, cards, and many other hidden costs and fees, can cost upwards of seven to $10,000. When you're able to take care of your loved one yourself, to wash and dress them and to organize their viewing from home, the only cost remaining is entirely in the cremation or burial itself. However, it's important to understand that different rules apply given on which state you live in. In all states, it is legal to have your loved one's body at home after they die. States like Alabama, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, and New York require a funeral director's involvement from signing the death certificate to overseeing burial or cremation. If this is a route you decide to go for yourself or your loved ones, make sure you follow everything by the book, but just know that this may be an option available to you and your loved ones if you so choose. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay, so we got everything. I am proud to announce the Hillside Heritage Enterprises received a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. What? This is an important revenue stream for us, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you. Although Hillside Heritage Enterprises, does he have to say it like every time? Just say Hillside. Is being paid a decent wage from the city for these services. Cremation is preferred here as it is the more cost efficient of the two options. The first unclaimed body we will be handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed for this cadaver aside from cremation. Like, so they're just unnamed? Forever? That's really sad. I mean, geez. Before we cremate this gentleman, we'll need to prepare his body. He doesn't seem to have any valuables on him that would be damaged during cremation, so let's just worry about putting his identification tag into the coffin with him. Great, this gentleman is all set to be cremated now. We'll need to use the cremulator to break these bone fragments down, all right. I mean, I think that would be like the saddest thing if you if you died and nobody like you had no one and they like nobody could even identify your body. Cuz you weren't leaving anyone behind. All right. Let's head to the f Why why are we having a funeral if nobody knew this person? Like who's going to be there? Well, that answers that question. Just me. I mean, at least somebody's grieving for this man. I don't think, like, in the history of this channel that I've ever gotten close to crying, like, while playing a game. But I'm, I'm teary-eyed right now. Wow.